Hello, everyone. So welcome, I'm Melis from University of Tartu. I'm the program director of Actuarial and Financial Engineering Master Program. And uh, I'll, in the following, I, I'll give you a, an overview of the program. So, I hope you can see my screen. Okay, so I give you a, a, a presentation about the program and this presentation is divided into uh, two parts. So first of all, I'll focus on the program itself. So why would you join it? Uh, what will you learn here? What's the structure of the curriculum? What are the courses? And also what we require from you to, to get admitted to the program. And in the second part, I'll explain more broadly about studying in, in Tartu, Estonia. So what's Estonia, Tartu? Probably you've heard uh, several, if, if you attended the seminar from the start today, then you've already heard already a lot about uh, Estonia, Tartu and our university, but so maybe I will be faster uh, in those parts, but then I also give you a little bit of uh, uh, information about our institute and about uh, studying uh, here in particular. So the program is a two years master program. So, and as the name says, we, we prepare specialists for two main sectors, so the financial sector and also uh, insurance industry. So, and what you, what you study here but besides lots of uh, analytics skills in general, more focused skills uh, in financial engineering and also in insurance mathematics. Uh, so, and uh, uh, why would you join this? Besides uh, what I already told, if, so if, if you, obviously if you're interested in, in the field. So if you're if you're interested in in uh, uh, a child field, or if you're interested in a, uh, in a uh, agrarian field, and this is a, this is a right place for you. And also, if you look at our graduates, our graduates are competitive both in the national and uh, the international job market. So, the most common uh, jobs uh, are uh, in banks or in insurance companies, but also in, in several teams or departments which are related to the analytics or, or financial modeling or, uh, or such. Also, uh, our teaching staff uh, consists of uh, qualified professors with uh, in, uh, international experience, experience and, uh, and uh, high level research. And also What's, uh, what gives, gives quite a lot is, is where we study. So the data center is, is a very uh, modern uh, study building, one of the most modern uh, study buildings in, in the Nordic uh, region. So, okay. And what you get from the program, so if you study here then uh, and, and finish the program, uh, what you should have is, you should have knowledge about main models and, and methods in, in financial and insurance mathematics. Also, you should know how you create models or how to apply probabilistic and statistical models uh, to real life, real life data. So how do you quantify the uh, phenomena in, in financial or industrial industry in, in practice? So you should also have knowledge of principle and, and methods of life and non-life insurance, including uh, subtasks like reinsurance and, and uh, premium calculations and uh, reserving. Uh, also, uh, if you 
a bit um, more into details in financial mathematics, you, you, you should know main principles of pricing and hedging options. You, you need to know how to calculate prices of standard options under, uh, under uh, most common market models. Also, the program has an optional uh, uh, possibility to, to also get an international experience. So if, if you come from abroad, then you already have an international experience. But in here, within the program, we, you, you, can, you can also have an, uh, 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 a semester abroad or, or traineeship or uh, internship abroad. And also, uh, well, the, the program uh, gives you skills of uh, conducting research and, uh, and practical work on, on specialty and uh, explains you how to link theory with practice. And this is sort of what you all com what you combine together in your master thesis. Uh, so the structure of the curriculum, so you can divide it into say five modules, but I, I would say the first three are the actual modules. And then you have the uh, small module where you can choose uh, optional courses. And at the end, you, you finish your uh, studies with master thesis. So the, uh, uh, okay, maybe also here, so the, the uh, ready points within modules are slightly changed. The change is not yet reflected on, on the web page, but uh, there, there are slight, uh, slight changes. So, so here in this presentation, I give you the, the new credit numbers, but anyway, not that it, it matters much if you have like few, few credits uh, moved from one module to another. So first module, the preparation module or the background module, uh, it gives the tools which are sort of required to, to proceed uh, in the field. So they are all sort of general purpose courses. So we have mathematical statistics, stochastic models, generalized linear models, time series, and, and, and also the, the newest edition is the statistical machine learning. So all these is which, which you uh, should know sort of before the next module, but not everything is required. Well, so the, the basic, more, more basic courses are actually uh, definitely prerequisites for the for the uh, more complex ones. But uh, well, to proceed with the with the next module, you should have like at least the mathematical, statistical, stochastic models, and so on. The rest are not uh, mandatory, and you can you can take them some of them at the same time. So anyway, so this is what gives you the background, some general analytic uh, module. So the second module is actually the core of the program. So this is uh, what we call the specialty model. And, and here you have like two sets of courses. So one set is related to, to finance or, or uh, financial mathematics. And another set is related to insurance or actuarial mathematics. So you have computational finance, you have models of financial mathematics and you know, simulation methods in financial mathematics. And then you have life insurance one, non-life, and, uh, and risk theory, which all contribute to, towards uh, your knowledge uh, in, uh, in insurance mathematics. So those two main branches are, are represented here. And as uh, with the previous uh, module, everything in this module is mandatory. So all the courses are uh, uh, all, all the courses are needed. So now it gets a bit uh, sort of more messy in a way that the next module, the third module is the elective module. So once you establish the, the main required paths, then you also have choices. So in the elective module, you have a variety of different courses which you can choose. So altogether, you have to get uh, uh, courses uh, with, uh, with the total amount of uh, 30 credits. But you have several choices here. But still, uh, I would say the first course, which is a master seminar, uh, this is just a supporting seminar which you have to attend while writing your thesis in a, in a, in a last semester. So this will be mandatory. And the professional practice one is mandatory. So this is a say our program is is theory backed program, but at the same time. Uh, it's, it's very applied. So the, there are clear applications in, in a financial sector uh, or, or insurance sector. So, so we encourage the students to also have an internship 
uh, during the studies. And this internship, one uh, one month internship, is is uh, considered as a passing. Well, you also have to uh, write a report and defend it. But but the main thing is is this one month uh, full time internship somewhere or equivalent, say two months half time. Uh, and, and this will uh, be created as professional practice one. So this will be mandatory, but those professional practice courses are very popular. So usually uh, our students take both of them anyway. So uh, uh, nine credits out of those 30 are mandatory. So if, if you decide to go with uh, longer practice, this will be 15. So, but still you can choose quite a lot from the rest. So you have survival models and, and uh, life insurance mathematics two and also uh, margin cash course, uh, which are all uh, sort of, so those first two are a sort of uh, uh, insurance related margin cash, uh, well, helps, helps uh, understanding of both. And then you also have uh, the Estonian course. Uh, so if, if you study here yeah, in Estonia, so you, you can also take up to six credits, the starters to, to help you commun communicate in Estonian. And then there are three, uh, say, sub-modules. So you can, you can choose economic selectives uh, from this list, uh, or just 12 credits. So out, out of all this list, uh, up to 12 credits will count. Uh, and also you can take uh, from, from the list of computer science selectives up to 12 credits. So, so, yeah, so you, can, you can take both because, well, you, you will overfill your module, but basically you can take both, but uh, it, it doesn't contribute to, towards uh, uh, completing your curriculum if you just take lots of electives and don't uh, don't take your uh, your mandatory courses. But uh, anyway, you can, you can choose from here, from here, and uh, uh, why those courses, they are the closest, uh, these uh, economics and uh, computer science are the closest disciplines uh, to this program. And these courses also contribute to required knowledge, which you may uh, need in, in your uh, future work. So depends on what are your goals, where you want to go. Uh, you, may, uh, uh, you may choose or uh, sort of uh, uh, Make your own uh, own path based on uh, based on this. Now, uh, yeah, and, and also besides the besides those, you have this uh, mobility modules. As many you, you can also study abroad for for a semester and uh, choose something from there, which is not specified. But we have a we have lots of uh, partner universities. Uh, uh, using uh, Erasmus uh, exchange program, also the Alight network, so you can choose from there if you're interested in in, in that. So and uh, at the end, so these so the main three modules, so the preparation background module, the core or specialty module, and the adoption module, and then you also can take any course um, up to or courses up to six credits. All, all the courses uh, contrib contribute can uh, can be taken into account here, and at the end you'll uh, complete your uh, studies uh, by writing and defending the master's thesis. So uh, about the uh, admission requirements, uh, so what you need to have, you need to have bachelor's degree, or if you don't have it right now. You still have time to obtain because uh, our admission starts uh, quite uh, quite early. So if you're still studying, it's it's perfectly fine. If you just uh, if you're still writing your thesis, say you can uh, you, you you have enough time to defend it uh, before the next academic year starts. Uh, then you need to have uh, some background in in math. So these prerequisite courses are sort of for your own help because we want to be sure that once you apply to the program, you can also pass the program because uh, because as, uh, our courses require math. So there, there is a theory which uh, requires understanding of the main, main mathematics tools and, and 
say probabilistic or statistical tools as well. Although we offer in the in the first module the uh, mathematical statistics course, and if you feel that you need some uh, base course still also in math, there is a calculus course which you can take extra, which can say count uh, under the optionals if if needed. But anyway, altogether you need at, at least uh, 24 credits. Uh, uh, in mathematics, which includes all the fields, calculus, probability, statistics, and so on, and six credits in, in computer science. So what's, what's required here, so uh, some basic ideas of programming are good. So in a way, programming in a specific language is not required. So, But the most important thing is that you, you have some kind of algorithmic thinking. So you, you, you understand how, how this work. So in, in our studies, we use mainly R, statistical package, or Python. So if you have some knowledge in those, it's fine. If you don't, it's easy to take, to take even uh, some uh, uh, free courses online. You have some knowledge, so it, it's, it's also perfectly fine. So, and, and this is the, the main, uh, main prerequisites. Okay, bachelor's degree, obviously as well, but the main main prerequisite is, is the uh, background that you need to have something in math, so some courses in math and something uh, in, uh, in computer science. So everything is, uh, or, or all the courses are taught in, in English, which means that uh, you need to have uh, English language proficiency, proficiency uh, to some level, and all the rules are specified in a university's webpage. There are several rules, several tests, uh, internationally uh, acknowledged tests can be used, and so on. Uh, and yeah, just visit uh, visit this site, and, and you, you'll see. And uh, uh, now, if all the prerequisites are met, then uh, how we sort of uh, uh, Make the uh, or, or, or how we how we compare the, the competitors is uh, based on your average grade of the previous study level. So forty percent comes from here, and also you need to write a motivation letter, and sixty percent of the final score comes from the motivation letter. Now with the average grade, it's 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 plain and simple. You just uh, if you if you graduate, then you then you also get the, the score from there. Uh, with the motivation letter, some uh, uh, hints here. So what you should focus on. So uh, the question is the first question is why. So why would you study these programs? So why are you interested? And also you would like to know whether the program is your first choice or, or not, and if not, what's your main interest, so understand why you are interested and how interested you are in, the, in this particular program, and also explain what you've done so far and, and explain sort of why you, what you've done so far, why it matches the uh, uh, program and why are you a good candidate for the program, because if there are several candidates, we have to choose, and uh, we want to know why uh, we should, we should uh, choose you. Uh, and also, what you can specify if you're already taught more about the area. So, if you have any any research uh, interest already in mind, or so you have already say your own topics so of what you want to pursue, you should let that now also uh, in the beginning. So, and also maybe maybe if you have thought in. That uh, much detail, maybe maybe you just know that okay, you're more interested in the financial part, or you're more interested in, in insurance part. So now, uh, and your your motivation letters will be uh, evaluated based on those three criteria. So we'll see how well the uh, your background that you describe in the motivation letter uh, fits the uh, uh, program. How well your goals fit the program. And uh, yeah, so the, the first one is, is the most important, is 50%, so the your goals is 25%, and, and also the clarity, argumentation skills, and, uh, and uh, fluency of uh, written English gives uh, the 
last 25% of the score. So uh, what's also important is, is uh, how much uh, everything costs. So uh, this is a fee-based program, which means uh, we have a tuition fee and the tuition fee is 6,000 euros uh, uh, per year. It covers your tuition, and well, some study materials as well, but mainly, mainly the uh, tuition. And so we have 15 spots in the program. So uh, that's the uh, information about this. And also uh, there are some rules so uh, which applicants actually are excused from the fee or, or which applicants get the application, uh, sorry, the tuition waiver. So if, if you rank the eight best applicants uh, within the uh, European Union or, or uh, European Economic Area or, or, or who have Swiss citizenship, then those uh, candidates, uh, eight best uh, applicants among those, will get the tuition waiver, which means they don't have to pay the fee. And for that, you don't need to do anything. So if you just apply, well, we'll see where you're from and, uh, and based on citizenship. Uh, so this is so sort of uh, favors the uh, the candidates from the European Union and, and, and close. Uh, also, there is a small thing to remember that all our uh, free study places or, or, or so if, if, you, if you get the tuition waiver, it also means that you, you have the uh, free study place. All those free study places have, have certain rules, and the, and the main rule is that you, you sort of need to uh, study in a nominal, nominal speed or, or almost nominal speed. So what's a nominal speed? Nominal speed or nominal workload is, is 30 credit points uh, per one semester. So, uh, and you can miss uh, up to six credits from the nominal load, but if, if you uh, miss more points, so if, if, if you don't uh, pass enough courses, then, then, you, then you have less, less points than the nominal. If you have less than six points, or, or say more than six points uh, are missing from the nominal, then you have to pay something for those uh, uh, missing points. Which, uh, yeah, so need to be careful with that. So, so what does that mean? So the 30 credits per, uh, per semester, which means that by the end of first semester, if you're receiving tuition waiver, you need to uh, have at least 24 credits, so 30 minus four. So by the end of second, you need to have 54 credits, which is 60 minus four and so on. By the end of th third semester, you need to have 90 minus, uh, minus uh, six, which is, uh, which is uh, 84. So, um, and what's also important, what are the deadlines? So the application system is already open, so you can uh, you can apply uh, uh, through the Dream Apply system. The deadline is in March, so you still have time to prepare everything. So the final uh, admission results will come uh, uh, the second half of April, April the 20th of April, and the new academic year will start in September. So those are the most important. Uh, uh, dates for you. And uh, now in a, in a second part uh, of this uh, uh, presentation, I'll give you an overview about studying in, in, in Tartu. So I'll start with Estonia. So well, sort of if you uh, attended these uh, seminars earlier today, then you sort of already know where we are. But uh, anyway, so Northeastern Europe, so we have uh, Finland, Sweden, uh, Latvia, Russia around us. So some uh, some more important facts here as well. So and uh, uh, what we are fond of, or what 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 Estonia is famous of, is is the innovation. So and and also we are uh, sort of uh, very digi digi savvy. Meaning that uh, so we have online voting, we have uh, e-residency, we have uh, uh, so, so the whole Estonia is a very digital society. Also, there are several 
uh, world famous uh, startups that come from uh, from Estonia. You can see from uh, Wise, for example, Crabcat for Kimo Bike Travel Starship, Skype, and and also the uh, Pisa Pisa list results uh, uh, have sh have have shown that the basic uh, education in Estonia has been amongst the best uh, uh, globally uh, for a very long time. So best in Europe and in top eight. Globally. So also about Tartu, Tartu is a, is a very nice, uh, quite small, compact uh, town. So and also it's it's very, uh, say, university related. So almost one in five residents in Tartu either studies or works at uh, at the university. Uh, yeah, and also what's even uh, even uh, more interesting, or may maybe or even what's, what's uh, particularly interesting right now is that this year Tartu became the European capital of culture. So if you start studying here this year, so you can also uh, take part of several activities which are which are related to to this. Okay. So um, although the university itself is in Tartu, it's uh, Different uh, different colleges are situated uh, are around Estonia, and uh, yeah, a little bit of history. So started quite a long time ago. By uh, it was uh, the university was established by uh, the Swedish king uh, Gustav uh, II uh, Adolphus, and uh, the university called back then Academia Torpatensis or Academia Gustaviana. Then it was reopened by the Russian Tsar Alexander the First. And then uh, uh, from uh, from 1990, we had a national uh, uh, university and we had like uh, four or five years back, we had the uh, 100th anniversary of our national university. Uh, at the end of this year, we have uh, 105th anniversary. So what's important uh, if, if you study here uh, is, is what are the values of the university or what, what we think is, is, uh, is uh, relevant. So the uh, activities are at the university are research-based. So we have cooperation within the university, uh, with the industry, with different universities within Estonia and, and outside Estonia. And also more important keywords uh, which, which matter at the university is responsibility academic freedom, uh, autonomy of university, openness, and also human-centered approach and, and the individual development. Uh, also, uh, I'm talking about Estonia, and if, if I focus on the uh, mission of the, uh, uh, of the University of Tartu, you, you can think of it as, as like a two, uh, two, two-fold or a dual mission. So, it's the National University of Estonia. This is the goal to, to serve as uh, making the uh, national uh, uh, study and, uh, and uh, research, but also it has the world-class uh, research, and this is the international mission of the university. So, and thus the university itself is, is a flagship of Estonian science. It, uh, it has, uh, well, it's, in Estonia we have several universities, but uh, the University of Tartu is the biggest of them and, and, and uh, has the highest, uh, highest level in, in, in research as well. So it's, uh, uh, it accounts for about one half of the national research. It has more PhD degrees. Uh, uh, at, uh, so we, in here, uh, we, uh, more PhD degrees are defended than in all the other our universities combined. And there are some more characteristics and, and also the University of Tartu ranks in the top 1% of the, worst, the world's most highly cited universities. So here are some, uh, some history of, of the university's rankings. So they are sort of quite, uh, quite high. So some of them are rising slightly, some of them are uh, um, lowering slightly, but anyway, this is a quite, quite high level by, by different rankings. Now, about international students, because this is also the, the webinar is also intended for international students. So we have about uh, 1.8 thousand international students in our university from from 90 different countries, and most of them actually 
study in master studies. I'm also talking about the a master program of financial and actual engineering. So most most of the uh, international students are here, and also. Institute of Mathematical Statistics is under the Faculty of Science and Technology, and uh, the proportion of, of uh, international students is the highest in our, our faculty. So now, what's also important is that besides studying, uh, there, is, uh, there are several things to do. We have uh, lots of uh, uh, student traditions uh, where uh, you can take uh, part. So there's a picture of the uh, student days, uh, Spring Student Days has the, one of the most popular events is the uh, is the competition of self-made boats uh, on the River Emma. I think this is this is uh, this picturing it and try to uh, try to check whether this this boat uh, uh, is is moving on water or not. And uh, yeah, so th there are there are several uh, several uh, activities that where you can take part of and uh, and. Uh, enjoy the student life. So a little bit uh, of the university, uh, sorry, uh, of, of the institute. So the, uh, back in, uh, say, back in uh, the, uh, the faculty or the, the mathematics in our university was teached under different faculties, but it was combined together as a faculty of mathematics in 1967. And it was the Faculty of Mathematics in, in 2001. It was combined with uh, informatics or computer science. Then we had the well, uh, uh, Faculty of Mathematics and, uh, and, and computer science. And uh, in 2016, uh, we had the reform of the university structure where uh, uh, we have now four faculties as presented below, uh, before, and uh, now the Institute of Mathematics and Mathematics and Statistics were combined as Institute of Mathematics and Statistics. And we are now situated at the, uh, at the Delta Center, uh, in the, sort of in the middle of Tartu, uh, by the river Yamayagi. So, and our goal is obviously to ensure that Estonia has well-educated mathematicians and statisticians, so which also includes uh, applied fields like uh, uh, mathematics and statisticians in, in finance and, and insurance, which is the goal of this program. Uh, we, are, we are active uh, in research, open for collaborations. So and this, the, the uh, research groups we have under our institute are given also here so mathematical analysis, geometry, algebra, so the main main branches of the mathematics, uh, probability theory, statistics, and finance. Uh, a little bit of numbers of uh, about uh, uh, these uh, students as well. So we have two bachelor programs. So we have the most uh, the biggest programs are the bachelor programs. We have the bachelor programs of mathematics and mathematical statistics. Then we have three master's programs. Mathematics and Statistics, Actuarial and Financial Engineering, and Teacher for Mathematics and informa Informatics. So all the programs besides the Actuarial and Financial Engineering are taught in Estonian. So the Actuarial and Financial Engineering is the only international program among those. And then at the, uh, the PhD level, we have a joint program with Computer Science, and uh, where the specialty of Mathematical Science is, is uh, uh, what our institute is, uh, is curating, and there we also have 18 uh, PhD students. So, and uh, where the studies take place, so I mentioned several times that uh, there's a new, uh, new and nice data center. You can, you can see it uh, here in the picture. So this is this is uh, where the studies uh, take place, and yeah, it's it's a it's a new and modern uh, building. So, and also this we have this entrepreneurship building. Uh, where several uh, companies are, are situated, and well, some of our students also have internship uh, uh, in, in those companies, which means they they very uh, can very easily uh, connect their studies with their uh, with their uh, practice in in any company because they sit very close. Well, and also what's what's uh, very important is that those those benches uh, close to the river are something which is. Uh, they are very popular if you have warmer days in spring and summer, uh, 
to study here, you would just hang out here. They, they are very populated uh, during those uh, uh, warm days. So, okay, so what's what's also important, what's, what's been asked is, is uh, uh, what about the student residences? So we, we have uh, eight student residences in total, but one of them, the Norosa, uh, is, is currently in, in renovation. So, so seven of them are, are currently available. And what's good is that four of them are very, very close to the uh, uh, Delta building. So these Narva, Narva Monte uh, residences are all very close and also Rato. So all, they all are closer than 10 minutes and some of them are maybe like two, three minutes. So, but uh, the rest are like further away, but, but, the, but it's not a big problem. In Tartu, basically everything is within walking distance. So it's uh, it's, it's not a bigger, bigger problem if it's a bit more uh, uh, far. Yeah, and here are some approximate prices uh, of these uh, dormitory places. And the very last, uh, uh, information slide is, is about the cost of living. Uh, I'm not going to talk or uh, we'll go through all those numbers. So you can just uh, later on uh, uh, just pause the uh, uh, recording and, and see what's what's uh, what's more interesting. Okay, so if you have any questions, any problems, if you need additional information. Just uh, send me an email and uh, yeah, hope to see you at the uh, University of Tartu. So that's uh, all about the presentation from me. I can see that there are some questions. Uh, Oh, the question is that uh, if I'm not sure uh, if my previous courses and credits are sufficient, uh, can I can I boost them with certified Coursera courses in relevant areas? Uh, yes, those those courses will be taken into account. So it, it is not so that if, if you don't have any math background, and and if you then have just some Coursera courses, then then it doesn't help. But if you are missing a little. And if you also know what fields are more important and, and, and take some Coursera courses, then definitely uh, give us the information about those, uh, write those courses in your, uh, uh, in your uh, uh, motivation letter and, uh, and we will take those into account. So, because they definitely matter. So if, if you take some courses, uh, some, some recent courses, they, they are definitely helpful uh, for your studies uh, here. So do we have uh, more questions? As mentioned, if you don't have questions right now, you can always just send me an email. Seems uh, no one wants to ask. So then, thanks everyone for uh, being here. And as mentioned, hope to see you in Tartu in September. Bye.